Hey everybody, Ryan Bernazian here, and welcome back to another edition of In Between the Ficuses. I'm here with our friends Matt Barbosa and Kale Kitchenman. Unfortunately, our boy Brian Atkinson could not be with us this week. We have a lot of great stuff to talk about today, but just a quick moment to start us off today. A uh, tragic story in the world of sports today. Jose Fernandez, the best pitcher on the Miami, Miami Marlins, and maybe even all of baseball, tragically passes away this weekend after flipping his boat down in Miami. He was 24 years old, and the Marlins will retire his number 16 at the end of the season. On another note, on to get started today, we have a lot of great stuff to talk about. We're going to start it off with Les Miles, head coach of LSU for over 12 years, has been fired. Guys, is this a shock to you, and where does LSU go from here? I mean, at any point in any sport, no matter what it is, if some coach is there for 10 plus years, it's always a shock. And Les Miles, LSU's been a powerhouse for as long as I've been watching football for the most part. So he's leaving Leonard Fournette on the table. Got a couple young quarterbacks to transfer in from Iowa, I believe. It's just, in my opinion, too soon. Too soon for the fire. Definitely too soon. I mean, two and two, I think it's a little too early in the season to just, you know, jump ship like that. I'm a little shocked. I mean, I knew there was a little bit of turmoil before. You know, they had questions where they wanted to bring him back last year. But like you guys said earlier, LSU, a powerhouse, you know what I mean? They produce a lot of players in the NFL. Definitely definitely interesting, and it'll be interesting to see what they do here, if they can rally and, and see what they do this season. Right, right. Moving on to another sport, we have the World Hockey of – the World Cup of – excuse me, the World Cup of Hockey finals are coming up. We have Europe and Canada. And, guys, we all know Canada is – a powerhouse of a team. I mean, the U.S. did not stand a chance, but are you surprised that Europe's in it? Not at all. I mean, as much as I wanted North America to be in it, and we're not, but Canada, Canada's got it under wrap, without a doubt. Team Europe can compete. Right. Yeah, Europe's a good team. I mean, congratulations to them for making it so far, but Canada's a is a very good team when it comes to hockey, so it'll be very interesting to see if you know if they pull up the upset. But definitely, I, I think Canada's going to win this game. Yeah, it really makes you imagine how good each team, well, USA and Canada, would have been if all the stars on North America's team would have been with those other teams. You know, it, it just seems kind of crazy. You know, very true. Moving on, we have NBA. Guys, the season's coming up. A lot of off-season moves, you know, were handed out this season. Obviously, Kevin Durant over to the Warriors and the amazing moves that the Philadelphia Sixers made over the year, over the past off-season. Guys, what are your predictions for this NBA season? Uh, with Durant going to the Warriors, kind of seems as if it's a creative team in NBA 2K, if you would, because they've got all the pieces, and they had them last year, and they just added one of the best players in the league. So they're stacked. Yeah, I think we have you get a stacked Golden State Warriors team, but I think there's a lot of other moves that were made to sort of maybe balance the power a little bit. I think, you know, the Eastern Conference stepped up a little bit. Maybe the league will be a little bit more competitive, but definitely Golden State's a team to watch out for this year. Moving on to the NFL, there's a lot of great, you know, games coming up this weekend. And honestly, last weekend was a great weekend for football. All of us being Eagles fans, the Eagles absolutely blowing out the Pittsburgh Steelers 34-4. to Guys, this Eagles team, you know, of course, they beat the Browns. They beat the Bears. Handedly, nobody saw this one coming. Are the Eagles the real deal, or is this just something that's some early season hype? As much as it pains me to say this last week in my predictions, I chose the Steelers beating the Eagles, and I'm sure probably around 75% of the league did too. But I couldn't be happier in the way it comes out. And Carson Wentz, Cameron Hayward, the Pro Bowl all-star defensive end for the Steelers, said it best. Played like a freaking Hall of Famer out there. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a little soon, it's a little early, but definitely positive things. You know, they're, they're top ten in, in scoring offense and defense, so that's definitely a good sign. Browns and Bears, I know what you're saying there. It's, it's iffy. Those aren't the best teams, but great win against the Steelers. Bye week this week in the Lions. So, I mean... You know, Doug Peterson came out on a, in a uh, press conference today and said that basically Carson Wentz has a lot of characteristics to Peyton Manning. And I think everybody knows how good of a quarterback Peyton Manning was throughout his career. So, you know, when you look at the NFC East, could you guys say that the Eagles are now the favorite in the NFC East? 
Uh, 100%. The way the Redskins and the Giants came out yesterday, not too confident. I never was confident in the Giants as an Eagles fan. And the Redskins were just, just horrendous. Kirk, right. Cous Kirk Cousins is, last week he was third in the league in passing yards. I think he may still be third. But you look at his choices and he just turns the ball over and he's way too careless at times. I think the Eagles definitely stepped out a little bit in front. I think the uh, the Cowboys are playing a little bit of good football. They were playing close games, but you know, with, with these with all these teams, it's always you know a battle to the last game of the season. But definitely doing all the right things, making these moves, being three and zero now. So I mean, we'll see. I definitely think as of right now, they've stepped ahead, and I think they're they are they are the clear clearly the best team in the, in the division right now. Another huge surprise in the NFL. Uh, another rookie sensation, Dak Prescott, also has zero interceptions throughout his first four game three games. And the Cowboys are two and one. Guys, are the Cowboys, you know, challengers in the NFC East? What's the deal with that? When people are trying to compare Carson Wentz to Dak Prescott and the rookie sensation kind of thing, and especially within the division, Dak Prescott is not throwing the touchdowns that Carson Wentz is. You saw that he threw. I can't remember which week it was, but he threw for 256 yards and ran for a touchdown. One was not dropped, too. Yeah. One was dropped, mm -hmm. exactly. But not taking anything away from him. He's a great quarterback, great player. Loved him coming out of college. But I think he could be their franchise quarterback of the future, especially with the way Tony Romo's back is. Mm -hmm. But he can't compare it to Carson Wentz. Yeah, I definitely think you got a little bit of some similarities, but, but definitely there's a different, a different level, I feel like, with Carson. You know, and it helps with, with the Cowboys having a better line, I feel like, and, and a good running game, but we're moving the ball downfield, you know, with deep passes and some intermediate runs and stuff like that. But I think they're definitely they're playing all right. I think it's a little too soon, but we'll see. I definitely think if Romo's back, you know, maybe they go to him, but, you know, if he continues to play this well, maybe they stick with him. Definitely second, though. Definitely easy second. So, as we know, there was also a lot of great games this week in the NFL and, you know, a lot of upsets, upsets, a lot of surprises. Which game was the biggest surprise for you guys? For me, I would have to go with Bills-Cardinals. That game, I mean, from a fantasy perspective, and I had the Bills defense on my team. I had Carson Thank Palmer. God. Oof, Unfortunately for you. Very but well for me. I mean, I with 26 points on that defense. And against that offense, with those weapons at receiver, Larry Fitzgerald, I'd in my opinion, I'd consider them the Jerry Rice of our generation. But I just they, – they got it done. They tightened up, and Rex Ryan's out there just flying. Do you, do you think this could be something, you know, for the Bills to build off of, or do you think this is just a week three spurt of energy, win at the last second kind I of thing? I think it's a great thing for them to have going into a week against the Patriots. Now the Patriots, I mean, as of right now, they do not have a starting Nobody quarterback. Be Belichick could be the quarterback for all we know. But Rex Ryan – He's got it down. And Rob Ryan, his brother, on, de on the defensive side of the ball, they're just great football minds, and they know what to do. And I think they'll come out with a win this week, running Old off prediction. of that. Whole prediction. Pat? Um, for me, I'd have to go personally with the Carolina Panthers losing at home to the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, both people, you know, both people thought they had good defenses, but I don't think anyone thought that the Vikings' defense would truly be that dominant. I think they registered about eight sacks, something like that. They just looked like a better team almost, and that's – I don't think that's something anyone really thought going into it. It's interesting to see how they'll bounce back. It's nice to see that they're playing hard, you know, with the loss of Adrian Peterson, with the loss of Teddy Bridgewater, Sam Bradford coming in from the Eagles, you know, short week. Yeah, it really seems like the trade for Sam Bradford to give Carson Wentz the, the ability to start for week one really, when you look at it, worked out for both Helping teams both because sides, both win -win. teams are 3-0 and they're absolutely dominating the pack. It's kind of deals you so, want. So, well, yep. guys – what are your predicted? You know, we have a few really good games upcoming this week. We'll start off with the Bengals, the Bengals and the Dolphins on Thursday night football. Guys, who do you have on this game? Hands down, Bengals. Yeah, one hundred percent the Bengals. I'm going with my upset of the week, Miami Dolphins. Wow, really? Right. I think they're going to bounce back and uh, have a really good game this week. That is a bold prediction, Barbo. So I hope that one works out for you, there, buddy. We got next another good game coming up. Let's see if the Steelers can bounce back after getting absolutely demolished by the Philadelphia Eagles. They're going up against the Kansas City Chiefs, who actually demolished the New York Jets. Guys, who do you have? I mean, I'm going to have to take the Chiefs in this one, going against the Steelers and the way they played against the Eagles last week. And you look at the Chiefs' defense, they had an interception frenzy on the defensive side absolutely. of the ball. Absolutely. Both safeties, I think, had two picks themselves. Six one, interceptions. Yes, and Ryan Fitzpatrick played awful, but... That's beside the fact. I'm going to go with Chiefs. I'm going to have to go with the Chiefs as well. Just a dominating performance, like you guys said. 
I don't even think I've ever seen somebody play that bad before. But, you know, the, the, the Steelers will definitely be coming hard, I think. You know, I think they got embarrassed, so they'll be looking to play hard. Yeah. But I still think the Chiefs will pull it out. You know, fun fact for you, the last quarterback in the NFL to throw six interceptions in a football game is Joe Namath. And they're both Jets. Oh, a little fun Ironic. fact for you there. there you yeah, go. a little irony there for you there, Jets fans. Jets need to figure it out. So, Sunday night, we have the Chargers at the Saints. Guys, this is a toss-up kind of game. I mean, Drew Brees, as we saw last night, can sling the ball still, but their defense cannot seem to hold points off the board. Who do you got? I'm going to take the ageless wonder, Drew Brees and the Saints, coming over the win with, over the Chargers. I'm going to have to go with the Saints as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, they took a hard loss last week, and I think they'll be playing hard as well. Yeah. The Chargers have some injuries, some key injuries. So mm -hmm. that'll be an interesting yeah, I never count Drew Brees out. Yeah. And then Monday night, our Monday night special at Monday Night Football. It's the only reason I wake up for Mondays is the Vikings versus the Giants. And, guys, this might be a pretty good uh, showdown between two teams. Yeah. Uh, with the game that the Vikings put up last week against the Panthers, as Barbosa said earlier, they're going to demolish the Giants, and the Giants are not going to be able to handle that. If they find a way to completely take uh, Odell Beckham out of the game, it's going to get ugly, and it's going to get ugly fast. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Vikings as well. I think, I think Odell will come out to compete. You know, he's gone through some scrutiny in the media. I think he'll come out and play hard, but that defense was something else against the Carolina Panthers. Giants, there's no way they're doing it. the Giants are doing anything against that defense. Right. Well, guys, hey. This was a great episode. You know, we had a lot of great stuff to talk about. And, you know, we'll see how matchups match up this Sunday for the NFL. And we'll see, you know, how things match up between Europe and Canada. It's a very exciting week in sports. We get to talk about all of that next week when we see you again. I'm Ryan Bernazian. Thanks for coming out. Have a good one.